Hello, I'm Dr. Anna Dale from Mount St. Mary's University in Emmitsburg, Maryland. Today's text is Descartes' Discourse on Method, Part 1. In the first paragraph, Descartes concludes that since people's reasoning powers are naturally equal, differences of opinion must result from different methods that they are using to govern their minds. In the second through fifth paragraphs of this part, Descartes introduces himself and his method to the reader. In paragraph two, he notes that he has never regarded himself as smarter than other people, and that his is an ordinary mind. In paragraph three, he acknowledges his good fortune in having a solid education, which has allowed him to form a method for increasing his knowledge to the highest level that his ordinary mind allows. He professes modesty, hoping that among the vanity and uselessness of human occupations, his work in crafting this method might not be wasted. In paragraph four, he acknowledges that he might be mistaken about everything and that reality might be completely other than he believes. But he will present his method, he says, letting each reader judge for himself whether it's any good. In paragraph five, Descartes wraps up this introduction, saying his purpose is not to teach anyone how to use their minds, but merely to show how he uses his own mind. He will not be a teacher because he does not think himself superior to anyone else, but he will tell a history or a fable, which the reader may imitate if he finds it helpful. In this way, he concludes, I hope that this essay will be useful to some, while harmful to none, and that my openness will be to everyone's liking. Now, a few comments about this introduction. Descartes adopts a persona here, presenting himself as a humble, common sense type of person, one with no special learning and no intellectual authority. Rather like Socrates, he begins his teaching by claiming he has no authority to teach. Instead, he will simply tell people what works for him and let them make up their minds about whether to follow a similar method. There is a good bit of false modesty in this opening, I think, but also certain assumptions about the nature of philosophy and about intellectual authority. I suggest you pause over these paragraphs for a few minutes and try to list some of the assumptions Descartes is inviting his readers to adopt here at the beginning of the discourse. That's all for now. Thanks for watching today. Goodbye.